Welcome class. We are at Foxtail Kitchen and Bar in Santa Barbara, California, located on Coda Street and State Street. This is my favorite place to go in town. It's a hookah bar. They got great Mediterranean food. And the owner is Jordanian. I used to live in Jordan, as you know, as a Peace Corps volunteer, and we just hit it off. Here he is, Fala. Hey guys. And yeah. he <laughs> and his dog Cash which a lot of the drinks here are named after. She's in trouble right now, but yeah. <laughs> You'll see Cash, uh, an Australian Shepherd, walking around all the time. This place is very dog friendly, and you'll see dogs everywhere. Uh, and, you know, it's a great place to hang out. Fortunately, due to COVID, you know, things are, are closed, but we're gonna, we're gonna bring the, the bar to you, and we're gonna teach you uh, some of the signature cocktails here, and a lot of the bartending 101 basics. Uh, that that you might not know about. So here we go. Thanks for joining and tuning in, and let's get started. Oh my God! Say H. Say H. Yeah. So, the first thing you will need to familiarize yourself with is going to be all the different types of alcohol that are out there. Today we are mainly talking about liquor, which is an alcoholic beverage made through distillation, rather than beer or wine, which are both made solely through fermentation. Liquors and spirits are synonyms, but liquor and liqueur are not the same thing. A liqueur, or cordial, is a type of liquor that is flavored and sweetened. Brandy is a liquor that is essentially distilled wine. Hennessy is a popular brand of brandy made in Cognac, France. Gin is a liquor that is flavored with juniper berries. Tanqueray is a London dry gin, which is the main style of gin found at bars. Rum is distilled from sugarcane or molasses, and there are a couple of different types. Captain Morgan is an example of a spiced rum, and Malibu is an example of a coconut flavored liqueur made with Caribbean white rum. Vodka is an odorless spirit distilled from potatoes or grains. Belvedere is from Poland and is made from rye, which is a type of grain. Arak is actually a spirit from the Middle East that is distilled from anise, which tastes like licorice. Let's transition to tequilas. Tequila is made from the agave plant native to Mexico, and there are classifications of tequila based off of how long they have been aged. Blanco, translated from Spanish, means white and is clear and not aged at all. Reposado translates into restful and is aged for at least two months. Anejo translates into old and is aged for at least a year. The longer they are aged, the more expensive they are. Whiskies are probably the most confusing liquor to master. First off, take note of the spelling. In the United States and in Ireland, whiskey is spelled with an E. Whiskey is spelled without an E if it is made in Canada, Scotland, and Japan. Tennessee whiskey is a spirit that is distilled in the state of Tennessee from at least 51% corn and filtered through sugar, maple, charcoal, and aged in new charred American oak wooden casks. Canadian whiskey is produced in Canada and is typically distilled from a blend of corn and rye and is aged for at least three years in wooden casks. Bourbon whiskey originally came from the Bourbon County in the state of Kentucky and is distilled from at least 51% corn and aged in new charred oak casks. Irish whiskey is made in Ireland and is distilled from unmalted barley and other grains aged in wooden oak casks for more than three years. Single malt refers to whiskey being made from a single distillery and is made from 100% malted barley. Scotch whiskey is made in Scotland and is distilled from malted barley or grain and aged in oak casks for more than three years. Rye whiskey is generally either American or Canadian and is distilled from at least 51% rye and aged in charred barrels for at least two years. Japanese whiskey is similar to scotch in terms of the ingredients, but is uniquely different in how it is distilled. 
Now let's talk about the different types of glassware you will find at bars. First up are wine glasses. Red wine glasses are typically whiter and have a rounder shape than white wine glasses. Red wine needs to aerate, which means mix with the air in order for the flavor to come out. White wines, on the other hand, do not require as much aeration. Next, we have the rocks glass, or the low ball, which is primarily used for whiskeys or cocktails like the old fashioned. The Collins glass, or the high ball, is a tall glass named after the Tom Collins cocktail, which has a really interesting history dating back to 1874. The copper mug is ideal for the Moscow Mule, a vodka based cocktail made popular in the 1940s. Next, we have the cocktail glass and the pint glass for beer. Both of these should be frosted, which means that they should be chilled in the freezer beforehand. Lastly, we have the shot glass, which holds 1.5 fluid ounces of liquor. The first tool I want to introduce to you is the cocktail shaker. This is used when you have to mix liquor with juices or other heavily flavored ingredients. Just remember not to shake any carbonated sodas. You top off a drink that requires soda at the very end. The bar spoon is used to stir ingredients together more gently than a shaker. Typically, you will want to stir drinks that are primarily made of liquor or cocktails that are poured directly into a glass. The muddler is a tool used for smashing drink ingredients to bring out the flavor. Cocktails with a lot of mint, like the mojito, or fruit ingredients are commonly muddled. It's a good rule of thumb to not serve a drink with the same ice you mix it in. Therefore, the strainer is an important tool for keeping the used ice and other ingredients out of the serving glass. The jigger is a tool for measuring exactly how much of an ingredient you need. The short side is 3 quarters of an ounce and the tall side is 1.5 ounces. When you are first starting, this is a good tool to use to prevent over pouring. However, you will eventually want to practice the free pouring technique. Free pouring is a fundamental skill for any aspiring bartender. As you can see, a standard shot glass is 1.5 ounces, which is the same as a taller side of the jigger. If we fill the short side of the jigger, you can see that it only fills 3 quarters of an ounce. Alright, so most bartenders learn the 4 count method as a substitute for using the jigger, and count up to 4 by saying 1-1000, 2-1000, 3-1000, 4-1000 with each count equaling out to one half of an ounce. Personally, I prefer to just count up to eight with each count equaling out to one quarter of an ounce. So counting to six equals 1.5 ounces and counting to eight equals two ounces. Okay, now let's go over some basic bar lingo. First, you should know the difference between well or rail liquors and top shelf or call liquors. The well or rail is where a bar keeps its standard brand of liquors, and these are going to be much cheaper both in price and in quality than top shelf or call liquors, which are specific brands that are requested. Ordering a liquor neat means that you will be getting two ounces served right out of the bottle without being mixed with anything. You can order a double of whatever liquor you want, and this means that you are doubling the standard pour of 1.5 ounces, so the total will be 3 ounces. Ordering something on the rocks means that you would like 2 ounces of liquor in a glass with ice. If you are at a bar and want to have a glass of water or soda alongside your drink, you can ask for it as a back. This is similar to a chaser. The term two fingers is generally used for ordering whiskey. You can either order a whiskey neat or you can say two fingers of whiskey. Both equal out to two ounces. The spelling of draft is different in standard American English than British English, but both refer to beer coming from a tap which is connected to a keg. Beer served from a keg is much better quality than beer from a can or bottle. The best way to pour a beer from the tap is to pull it forward completely at a 45 degree angle without having the tap touch the glass. 
Once the glass is half full, you should move the glass upright and have the beer pour down the center until you have about one inch of head. Head refers to the foam on the top of the beer. If there is too much head, you can let the beer sit until it settles and then finish the pour. Alright, it's time to make our first drink and I'm going to teach you the classic martini. It is made of six parts gin and one part dry vermouth. Vermouth is essentially wine with brandy added. There are two different types of vermouth, dry, which is clear, and sweet, which is red. There are many variants of the martini. For example, an extra dry martini uses less dry vermouth, a wet martini uses more dry vermouth, and a dirty martini has olive juice added to it. The first step is to fill the shaker with ice. Add three ounces of gin and one half ounce of dry vermouth. Martinis are usually stirred for about 30 seconds because shaking it will bruise the gin. This means that the flavor is changed because of the broken down ice and will dilute the liquor. Asking for a martini that is shaken, not stirred, is an order made popular by James Bond in the 007 movies. One theory of why he does this is because the drink would be more watered down and he wouldn't be as drunk, hence giving him a competitive advantage when playing cards. Now strain the drink into a chilled cocktail glass Squeeze a lemon peel over the rim of the glass And then garnish it with an olive There you go, the classic dry gin martini Shaken, not stirred Cheers, saha, ganbei